We're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Time for us to go through the papers. Uh, we'll have Nika Gule join us this morning to make sense of the headlines. Nika, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning, Messi. Good morning, Kofi. Good morning to our viewers. All right, let's take a look at the leadership. Uh, the leadership talks about the 2023 election. Of course, this is 2023. In 22 more days, we'll definitely have the elections. Uh, 2023 presidency, 22 days to go. PDP accuses Wike of working for Tunubu. And uh, the writer says, we didn't stop your rally. Rivers governor replies, state party executive back Wike against Atiku. I mean, so much one would begin to ask uh, some sort of anti-party politics going on. And why exactly has the PDP not taken action? Uh, 22 APC governors behind Ashiwaju, that's Erufai, quoted to say. And just before we move away, Jigawa residents excited over 17 billion naira uh, Hadija irrigation scheme. If I got that correctly. Step down, apologies or apologize to Sardin governors. Click tells, I take that again. Step down, apologize to Southern governors. Clark tells Okoa, that's the running mate of the um, presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party. Southern Middle Belt leaders vow to deliver OB. NMPCL sign $740.6 million contract to fix Kaduna refinery. Naira swap, CBN okays 20000 over the counter payment. I mean, it's a conversation I and Kofi uh, have had this morning. Violence in Southeast must be crushed, IGP is quoted to say. Two die, many trapped in Abuja building collapse. That's it this morning on the Leadership Newspaper. All right, let's go over to the punch with these headlines. Um, the big one there with the kicker, new Naira crisis, uh, Asa Rock forces inciting Nigerians against APC, Aerofi, Malam Nasser Aerofi, governor of uh, Kaduna State is still talking about this. Uh, he's given another interview, he's still reiterating what he said uh, a couple of nights ago, Asa Rock forces inciting Nigerians against APC. The writers to that, Cabal misinforming Buhari, Atiku benefiting from Naira confusion. Uh, Kaduna governor, come out to vote, even if they devalue Naira drastically, Tinubu tells supporters, uh, CBN policy inflicting pain on the masses and business of uh, businesses, NLC, TUC, and Niger state governor. More from the punch. Three killed as Abuja building collapses after extra floor. Guess some people will be cooling their heels uh, in, in jail if any life was lost. NNPCL, Dewu, sign uh, 342 billion Naira Kaduna refinery rehabilitation deal. Missing crude probe, IG, refers reps to Malami. Uh, PDP, Knox Wike, accuses governor of anti-party activities. V v VP, Clark, says Okoa betrayed South, the governor's protests. Okay, and um, this is some of the headlines on the front page of The Punch. While well, we take our attention to the Daily Trust newspaper, Naira crisis, APC governors reject February 10 deadline. I mean, what exactly is this issue uh, with the new Naira and the old Naira? What, how much is this money that Nigerians can you know, take to the counter? What, how much are we talking about here? Or why can we have a natural system where this money just you know, retrieves itself? Tell the Mephilis people or tell the Mephilis people are paying to get their money. Demand one year extension to meet Buhari today, uh, protest in Lagos. Tell the Mephili people are paying to get their money. Demand one year extension to meet Buhari today, uh, protest in Lagos. Military operation suffers as troops in Bush's cash strap. Okay. Only masses are suffering. Politicians are having their way. Kwan Kwaso is quoted to say, and not only politicians. I think that if you have the means, if you have what it takes, you know, to pay so much to get the Naira, then it might just be working for you. Then you have the NNPC, 
engages Korean Koi on 341 billion Naira Kaduna refinery repair. Nigeria recorded over 10,000 cases of cancer in, 10, in the month. And uh, we're not afraid of anybody verify there's Villa Cabals. I mean, so there's, there's a lot of back and forth that's going on. Uh, then you find two killed, 40 trapped as the Buja building collapses. That's the much we can take this morning on the Daily Trust. The final paper we have uh, for you is uh, Nation. Um, leads with uh, the... Uh, the political story, a big one there, El Rufai, Fashola, Buhari's backing for Tinubu Solid. Buhari's backing for Tinubu Solid. President supporting APC candidate, says Lai Mohammed. No split in APC, all right? Is that what uh, Nigerians will believe? Um, CBN pegs daily withdrawal across the counter at uh, 20,000 uh, cashless banks. Turn back customers. Uh, we hear of cashless policy, but if you hear of cashless banks, that should uh, give us uh, some reason to worry. APC governors to meet president today. Uh, NNPCL firm assigned $740 million. Let's talk about Canada Refinery and all that. Uh, APC candidate restates commitment to job creation, credit facility for businesses. Uh, are some of the headlines on the front page of the nation. I'd like to bring at this point um, Nika Gule, a public affairs analyst, our guest on this mm -hmm. segment nick thank you for your time once again uh let's start with for me uh, i would like you to start with the deal signed between the nnpcl and daewoo uh we're looking at um if you want to be patriotic 342 billion naira uh to rehabilitate the kaduna refinery if you want to go the way it, you know the international community will understand 740 million dollars um, with, with just a few months to the expiration of the tenor of this administration, I mean, should they be embarking on such projects? Or should we say the NNPC is a, a limited liability company now and therefore it can continue with its activities whether the government is about to leave or not? Thank you very much uh, for that question. Uh, as an oil industry expert, I see news like this as just making headlines because there is nothing that should have stopped the NMPC to fix the refineries even when it was not a limited liability company. There was absolutely nothing. The NMPC, just like the night of old, are government enterprises that are being mismanaged that don't have any business plan, that are not run like a business. Because, I mean, how can you run a business where for more than 10 years, I, I can't remember when last, we refined a barrel of crude oil in any of our refineries. At least I know that we have not done that in the entire eight years of the Buhari administration. And I think it actually uh, was there uh, in the Jonathan administration, perhaps even in the Yaradua administration, maybe even if we stretch it back to the Obasanjo administration, none of the Nigeria's four refineries have refined a single barrel of crude oil. So how can you run a business like that, that the business is generating zero revenue for decades, yet you have your full complement of staff in place? You are spending billions of Naira free a year on a business that is delivering zero revenues. You can clearly see that this is not being run like a business. It's perhaps being run like some sort of charity or something like that. So the NMPC of old and the NMPC of today is nothing but the same thing. If the government wanted to uh actually restructure the nmpc there is no way you can restructure an organization and keep the entire leadership of the old organization that you believed was not working well was not being managed well in place and say that you have actually got a new organization you haven't got any new organization it's like taking the same wine and putting it in a different bottle and thinking you have a different wine so i i, I am not excited about this news, I just know that it is one of their headline-grabbing news 
just like they will just come out from the blues and announce oil discovery and the beginning of uh, uh, drilling in Nasarawa State when they have not done any exploration, they have not announced any results. All over the world, if you discover oil, there is a technical report that comes out to say, look, we found X number of reservoirs. This is where the reservoirs are. This is the quantity of oil we have found in these reservoirs. These are the number of exploration wells we have drilled. And now we are beginning to drill oil for production. There was nothing like that. And Nigeria just uh, get excited over this news, which is nothing but uh, just uh, uh, hot air that is being blown. Uh, I, I think that the NAPC leadership themselves know that the next government that is coming into power in May is going to sweep them away. So if this kind of news is what they are trying to use to hoodwink the incoming government that they are actually doing something, I don't think the government is going to be deceived. So this news to me is not exciting. Let's look at the leadership newspaper. Uh, 22 days to go, PDP accuses Wiki of working for Tunubu. Uh, that's as regards the presidency. And the question here is, why exactly has the PDP not taken action? I mean, if they can say that Wike is working, uh, you know, against their presidential candidate and supporting another, why has the PDP not, you know, um, suspended Wike as it should be? I mean, others have been suspended for involving in anti-party activities. Uh, what exactly um, is holding them back? There's a difficult situation here between the PDP and Governor Wike. On the side of the PDP, they know that River State is an important state for, you know, to win a presidential election. Two things must fall in place for you. Number one, you must win the popular vote. That means all over the nation, you must pull the highest number of votes amongst all the contestants. Number two, you have to win 25% of the votes in two thirds of the country. The PDP is not bothered about the second criteria, winning 25%. They have enough states in Nigeria that could probably take 25%. What they are worried about is the popular vote. If you lose a state like Rivers, that takes a chunk of the popular vote away from you. And so when we say the PDP should bring down the sledgehammer on Governor Wiki, they are not going to do it. In fact, these uh, crises have started for months now, and we are only counting days to the elections, and they have not taken action against Governor Wiki because I believe that they are still hopeful that there could be some sort of last-minute um, agreement, uh, you know, that could still bring Governor Wiki into their fold. So that, that explains why the PDP is not coming hard on Governor Wiki the way they have uh, done in... Uh, in other cases. In fact, they haven't come hard on any of the five renegade governors. They haven't. So that is the reason. They are trying to ensure they don't lose the popular vote. On the side of Governor Wiki, he also has a difficult challenge. I mean, he's a governor. Nick, can you hear us, please? Okay, it seems we have a, a network interference. Uh, okay, the highest amount of oil for and and you, you, you find out that Governor Wike, as we speak today, has not been able to come out in public to tell us who is supporting for an election that is happening in the next few days. That, to me, is a problem for him as a politician, that you aren't able to stand behind a presidential candidate in an election and you are a sitting governor. I mean, in the news in the past few days have said that Governor Wike said he has informed his supporters of uh, who his presidential candidate is. And within the same time frame, uh, we heard that Governor Wike banned the use of uh, the stadium in, uh, in Rivers for articles campaign. So if we do the math, we clearly know that Governor, that presidential candidate that Governor Wike is said to have informed the supporters that he's supporting is certainly not article. So who else can it be? We don't know. So this is the kind of... Um, a situation that we're in, but trust this politician, trust them. It is always about their interest and not about the interest of any other person. Once the PDP is able to um, get Governor Wiki uh, on his side, the same Governor Wiki will start uh, singing uh, different tones. Right. And you know, the PDP, Governor Wiki has put uh, the, the, the sack of the chairman on the table. 
as his condition for coming back and uh, joining the, the forces in the PDP for the campaigns. And uh, I think Kwebaka has a very difficult job there because uh, Yochi Ayu <laughs> is the person that works the, the, the election, the, the, I mean the primaries in his favor. So he too doesn't want to let uh, Yochi Ayu to go. So that is that's just where they are. But trust right. politicians, who knows? Right. They might be bringing up something. All right, all right. Um, maybe yeah. one could say properly, we can give um, a very impossible uh, condition uh, for the PDP to fulfill. But um, he said that he never told us that he will announce his uh, preferred candidate mm -hmm. on TV, on video. So uh, maybe we should just leave him and cut him some slack. But one wonders why he's been saying all these things on TV and then for this important one, he won't say it on TV. But let's look at what the, um, the rumble in the jungle, if you want to call it that. Uh, this time the jungle is uh, the Upper Progressives Congress. Aero fires in blowing hot. Aisha Buhari posted a clip of Aerofi's allegations that uh, personal elements in the ruling administration, ruling party, the Asarok Villa, you know, working against the party's presidential candidate, Ashiwa Jibola Tinubu. And he's still talking, and the papers have captured it today. As a matter of fact, uh, the front page of the Punch newspaper read some, uh, something about that. Even though in the nation, uh, it seems that the paper is trying to tell us that there is no crack uh, in the APC, and the president is solidly behind uh, uh, Tinubu. What are your thoughts on these, these allegations and then the perception that the APC uh, is trying to paint? Yeah, my, my thoughts are that there cannot be smoke without fire. Uh, whereas I, I cannot sit here and confirm uh, the veracity of uh, what uh, Governor Wike is, uh, sorry, what Governor, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, Erufai, yes. Yes, what, what Governor Erufai is saying, um, it, it, there, there are some elements of the truth because let's look at it carefully. Uh, the APC presidential candidate, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, is a Southern Muslim. And there are some core fanatical Northern Muslims that don't reckon with uh, Southern Muslims as being real Muslims. That is a fact. I mean, nobody should be deceived about that. In fact, uh, the Tinubu himself recognizes that. And that is why, against all odds, he went and selected a core Northern Muslim uh, as his vice. I mean, risking the fact that he's going to have a Muslim Muslim ticket. He was trying to balance that, knowing fully well that, you know, by being a Southern Muslim, he's not going to receive the support of some of the elements in the North who are called Muslims. And uh, so he is also fully aware of that. So if there are elements within the presidency, within the APC itself, uh, within the APC's hierarchy, uh, who are not supportive of, of Governor Tinubu, I will not be surprised. Because, you see, religion is an issue in Nigerian politics. Regardless of party affiliation, there are some people that would rather put their vote for the PDP uh, presidential candidate uh, on the religious uh, card. So uh, what Governor Erufa is saying uh, has some elements of the truth. That's my view about it. Well, I mean, there are too many uh, interesting headlines this morning. But let's even see if we can take one or two before we coast the conversation down. Uh, this talks about... Uh, Edwin Clark telling Okoa, that's the vice presidential candidate of the uh, People's Democratic Party for the presidential elections 2023, 25th of February to be precise, asking him to step down and apologize to Southern governors. What are your thoughts really on this? My thoughts are totally aligned with the elder statesman, Edwin Clark. Uh, Governor Okoa was the one that uh, convened the famous Asaba conference where all the southern governors for the first time sat together in a room because he told they were having southwest governors southeast governors like that south south governors on this particular day they all sat in a room and they came out with a very strong worded press conference to say that the president the presidential uh, election the presidential candidate must be zoned to the south and they were very very strong on that and i was very supportive of that as well because, I mean, for the purpose of equity, we cannot have the North take the presidency for eight good years and then we don't give it to another region as if there are no candidates in other regions. And then the same Governor Okowa is now the one that is playing second fiddle to a Northern candidate. 
So it, it's much of hypocrisy, and I think uh, Governor Kowa's uh, political career will be over if he doesn't win this uh, vice presidential election. That's my view about it. All right, All right. then. All right, Nick, uh, thank you so much for your time. It's been a thrill having you um, this week. I have not seen the Benue sunshine, but um, I think uh, all the same, you brought sunshine to our conversation this morning. And so we wish you a fantastic weekend and look forward to having you again on the program soon. Thank you. My last word to Nigerians is, if you have not collected your voter's card, or, or, or has the deadline passed now? No, uh, for Sunday. For those who have collected, sorry? It, it, it elapses on Sunday. Yes, they lost this on Sunday. So thank you, Kofi, for that. The, 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 the deadline to collect your voter's card elapses on Sunday, please. See how we are suffering. We have been queuing for fuel, queuing for jobs, queuing for electricity, queuing for good roads, queuing for water. And even our Naira that we were not queuing for, that we were seeing freely to use, they have made us to start queuing for it now. I bought the Naira 10,000 for 1,000 Naira. That's what I used to pay 100. And I pay 1,000 to buy it. How much more can these people push us before you stand up, get your voter's card, so that on the 25th of February, we're going to elect a leadership that will work for us. Please, stand up. I'm kneeling down to beg you. Thank you, Nigerians. Thank you very Literally much, Nick. sitting. Thank well, you. that's the much we can take at this point in time. We do appreciate your uh, thoughts this morning. We'll take a break, Kofi, and then when we return... Yes, indeed. We'll look at uh, vote buying. Um, maybe you chop their money. I'll be making no chop. They said, they said collect the money and then vote for your questions. But um, we'll get everything about vote buying when we come back. Stay with us. <laughs>